This is a mechanical calculator called the Magic Brain, manufactured in Japan around 1960 by the Chadwick Company. Various companies produced many variations of this calculator. In this video, we will use this specific model to understand how it works. On the side of the calculator, there is a metal stylus. The middle section consists of seven input sliders, which the stylus is used to move up or down. At the top, there are eight digit windows. The base of the calculator is made of plastic, while the cover is made of sheet metal with cutouts, and the two parts are joined by rivets. Additionally, there is a metal wire at the top to reset the results to zero. Does it actually work? Let's take a closer look. When you open the cover, you will see metal strips with numbers on them. This is a remarkably simple design for a calculator, lacking gears or complicated moving parts. The results are displayed through small cutouts over the metal strips. The number markers on the sides are designed so that pulling down from nine results in nine. On the right side of the input sliders, there are two columns of numbers. The right column is used for addition and the left column for subtraction. The metal strips are divided into white and red sections. For each mathematical operation, the red sections must move downward and the white sections must move upward. To carry over to the next column during addition, the white section must reach the top, shift to the left, and then pull one down. For borrowing during subtraction, the red section must move all the way down, shift to the left, and then pull one up. These simple rules make the calculator easy to use. So, let's try it out. To add three and four, we note that all sections are red, indicating that we need to pull down. Using the black numbers as a reference for addition, we pull down three, then four, and get seven. Adding three again brings us to a white section, so we pull up, shift to the side, and pull one down, resulting in 10. To perform the subtraction of 13 from 25, we start by setting the input sliders to 2 and 5 in their respective columns. Next, we reference the left column for subtraction. Begin with the digit in the rightmost column, 5. We need to subtract 3 from 5. Since the sections are white, we pull up 3 on the slider for the digit 5, which gives us 2. Next, move to the left column, 2. We need to subtract 1 from 2. Again, since the sections are white, we pull up 1 on the slider for the digit 2, which results in 1. So 25 minus 13 gives us 12. Now let's explore another example for clarity. Let's subtract 47 from 83. Set the sliders to 8 and 3. Start with the rightmost column. 3. We need to subtract 7 from 3. Since 7 is greater than 3, we will need to borrow. Pulling down 7 on the slider for the digit 3 will cause the red section to move all the way down. Move to the left side and pull up one unit on the slider. This changes the neighboring column, 8, to decrease by 1, changing it to 7. Now, move to the left column, 7. We need to subtract 4 from 7. Since it is in the white section, pull up 4 on the slider, resulting in 3. Thus. 83 minus 47 gives us 36. That's pretty cool. But why does it work? Adding or subtracting in its simplest form is essentially counting. Imagine an infinitely long ruler with a pointer. To add 5, you move the pointer to 5. To add 6, you count 6 steps from the current position and move the pointer accordingly. To subtract 4, you count back four steps and move the pointer. This way of calculating involves manually counting steps. What if instead of moving the pointer, we fixed it and moved the ruler? We could limit the addition to single digits. So instead of ranging from zero row to infinity, the range includes only zero to nine repeatedly. For multiple digits, we could use multiple rulers. By fixing the step numbers, we eliminate manual counting. Every time we want to add a number between zero and nine, we simply move the ruler to the pointer. It's the same as moving the pointer, but more convenient 
and it saves us from manual counting. To make it even more convenient, we could change the pointer design and add slots to the rulers for precise movement. Additionally, we could add a limiter at the pointer to stop it exactly at the pointer position. Let's try some numbers. To add 4 to 5, we move the ruler so the pointer shows 4. Then we move 5, resulting in 9. If we add 6 next, the result is 5 instead of 15 because this method is limited to single digits and ignores the carry. This method is similar to how the metal strips work inside a magic brain calculator. Although the result window and the limit point are slightly apart, the numbers are offset to compensate, ensuring accurate results, but the metal strip has a finite length with only 20 teeth, with the numbers 0 to 9 at one side. Additionally, the strip is divided into white and red sections, determining the direction of movement up or down. To understand this better, let's revisit the ruler concept, but with more numbers arranged in a repeated 0 to 9 pattern. If we want to add 3, we move the ruler from this position 3. Interestingly, the result remains the same, whether we use this 3, another 3 further along the ruler, or even move backward by 3. This backward movement means we don't need an infinite number of steps. Instead, we can use a ruler with only two sets of 0 to 9 numbers. For example, to add 9, we move the ruler left using the reference point at the right side. When the ruler can no longer move left, adding 1 requires using the reference point 1 at the left side. If the ruler is at 4, we can only add 5 by moving left. To add 6, we use the number 6 on the left side. So let's divide the ruler into two sections, red and white at this point. Also add another limiter so that the red section moves to red limiter and white section to white limiter. Let's try a few examples. 5 plus 9. 5 is in the red section, so move left. To add 9, move right since it is in the white section and we get 4. 5 plus 8. Move 5 to the left and move 8 to the right and we get 3. OK, it works as expected. Every time the white section moves right, it indicates a carry. For instance, if the ruler is at 7, all numbers aligned with the white section add up to 10 or more. In the Magic Brain calculator, when numbers in the white section move up, the stylus shifts left and pulls down the left column to add the carry. This principle underlies many mechanical adders. For subtraction, we can no longer use backward counting techniques like in the first infinite ruler example due to the backward movement used in addition. In systems like this and other mechanical calculators, subtraction is performed by adding the complement of the number. For instance, if we want to subtract 4 from 4 to get 0, we add the complement of 4, which is 6. To see more clearly, you can assume this slider as a number wheel. To subtract 4, you can rotate the wheel backwards by 4 steps, which will give us 0. Or, you can also rotate forward by 6 steps to reach the same result. This method is known as the tens complement technique, where the complement of a number is found by subtracting it from 10. To subtract using complements, we simply add the complement numbers next to the addition numbers and use them for subtraction. Subtracting any number in the red section requires borrowing from the left column. Therefore, whenever we need to subtract in the red section, the stylus must shift left and pull up the left column to decrease the number by 1. Understanding how each number strip works allows us to chain them together to add or subtract any large numbers we want. The Magic Brain Calculator uses vertical sliders so that the numbers are more readable from left to right. This video turned out longer than I expected. Initially, I thought this calculator was simple, with only a few parts. However, as I wrote the explanation script, 
I realized how some simple ideas resulted in this ingenious pocket calculator. I wanted to share my thought process on how this simple device might have been created or conceived. I may not know exactly how the first creator arrived at this design, but it is undoubtedly genius. If you want more in-depth explanations about interesting machines and gadgets, please subscribe to our channel. We upload two to four videos a month, depending on the complexity. You can also support us by becoming a Patreon member, allowing us to create more quality content. Thank you for watching and see you next time.